Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the great disappointment, William Miller in 1844. And in this class, we're going to show where William Miller went wrong when he calculated the date of the second coming. And we're going to show you what year he was actually supposed to come up with using the scripture and a little bit of mathematics. And we're going to show how what he was expecting as far as the second coming did, in fact, occur, but only a few years later. Now, one of the biggest events that has happened in the so-called Christian religion is the Great Disappointment of 1844. This was the result of a gentleman named William Miller doing some calculations from the scripture, coming up with the idea that the second coming of the Messiah would take place in 1844. Now, Mr. Miller preached this doctrine all over the world. He was accepted by a lot of churches who heard this message and over a million people were waiting for this particular date, October the 22nd, 1844, as being the second coming of the Messiah. People sold their houses, they burned their money and quit their jobs, believing that October the 22nd, 1844 would be the last day of their lives, or at least as life as they know it being the second coming of the Messiah. But one thing we know for sure is that it actually didn't happen. Those people waited all night long for some event to happen and nothing actually took place except for this so-called great disappointment. By then, you had had a lot of religions that was actually created around William Miller's prediction. The Seven Day Adventists, the Jehovah Witness, even the Baptist and the Methodist congregations were growing exponentially as people were coming to hear this message by William Miller in 1844. All right, so let's look at how William Miller came up with this date, 1844, first of all. Now, his calculation centered around the date 457 BC, which would have been about the seventh year of King Artaxerxes II. Now, when we come over to Ezra chapter six, we see that there was actually three decrees that were made, one by King Cyrus, one by King Darius, and one by Artaxerxes, king of Persia. The thing about William Miller was that none of the other decrees fit within his timeline or his lifespan. So they really didn't make sense to him. Like, for instance, the decree given by King Cyrus, which was over a hundred years before that of Artaxerxes, which meant that Miller's predicted date based on the Cyrus decree would have been a hundred years before he was actually born. And the same is true by the decree by Darius being several decades after that by Artaxerxes. If William Miller had used that date in his calculation, his prediction for the second coming would have been years after his lifespan had ended. So the only one that fit within the time frame in which he was living was the decree by Artaxerxes, king of Persia. But no matter what William Miller did, we do know that his predictions failed. Nothing that he said actually came true in the year 1844. In fact, everything that he said was going to occur in 18. 44 did not occur. So for the majority of us, it should be really clear that there was an error made. But the problem is, is that there were so many religions based off of William Miller's prediction that still adhere to those dates. Meaning if you go to the seven day Adventist church or the Mormons or the Jehovah Witnesses or anybody else, that was talking about 1844, all of those many years ago are actually still talking about 1844 and are still trying to use Willem Miller's debunked error field calculation in order to support their religion 
of today. Their religion was based on this false calculation and it appears as though they believe that if they actually look to try to figure out when these events were supposed to take place, then their entire religion would fall apart. So they don't want to look when you hear people talk about William Miller in 1884. You see them stick to it religiously, not wanting to understand what it is or what was the correct year. Well, that's what we're going to do next in this video is we're going to see what year was William Miller supposed to be pointing to if it wasn't 1844. Now, let's come back over and let's look closer at what we read in Ezra chapter six. We were talking about verse 14 when we were talking about the decrees given by Artaxerxes, Cyrus and Darius. But I think the problem that William Miller had, the reason why his calculation was wrong was because he overlooked verse 15 out of Ezra chapter six, which is talking about the finishing of the third temple. It was finished in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king on the third day of the month Adar. This is the time that the Levites and the priests dedicated the house of the Lord and they actually started making daily sacrifices again. Now, let's come over to a image from the time chart of human history to get some of these historical dates, particularly the date of Darius II, who took the reign in 424 BC. So if this Darius the king took the reins in 424 BC and we look at the sixth year of his reign, but notice here that it says that the house was finished in the third day of the month Adar. Now Adar is actually the 12th month on the sacred calendar. So if it was finished in the last month of the year and they started making sacrifices in the first month of the following year, that will put the dedication of the temple in 417 BC. Now, let's look at something really interesting when it comes to this particular date, 417 BC. For instance, how if we go 480 years which is 69 times seven years from the dedication of the second temple. We end up in the year 67 AD, which was actually the time that they pillaged and plundered the temple the second time, the temple before it was destroyed in 70 AD. So similar to what Nebuchadnezzar did back in 605 BC, where he went in and took all of the sacrificial instruments and took them back to Babylon and put them in the house of his God. Well, the Romans in 67 AD came in and took those same gold and silver instruments and took them back to Rome and put them in the Vatican. Now, of course, I get this 69 weeks from Daniel's prophecy in chapter nine and verse 24 and 25, when he's talking about the 70 weeks that are determined upon thy people to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for inequity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and anoint the most holy. That is a lot of stuff going on in that verse there and a lot of stuff that's going on in this 70 weeks. Now, when it comes to these 69 weeks, of course, this comes from Daniel chapter nine and verse 24. But look what happens when you start in 417 BC and you look at the other seven weeks or the other 49 years. Well, if you back up from 417 BC, seven weeks, you end up in the year 466, which is about the year that Artaxerxes became the ruler. Now, the scripture doesn't give us the date of the decree by Artaxerxes, but it appears as though it was close to the beginning of his reign in 466 BC. Now, that ain't all interesting. Looking at this date, 417 BC, like we talked about, if you add the 69 weeks, you end up with the pillaging and plundering of the second temple. 
Now, if you try to apply these other prophecies by Daniel using this 417 date, other interesting dates pop up as well. Like, for instance, how over in Daniel chapter 12, it talks about that time, time and half a time that those who would destroy the temple would have to scatter all of the people. Well, if you start at 417 and you add the first 69 weeks, it brings you to the pillaging of the last temple. But then when you use 490 years as a time and you look four times in the future, you see that the scattering of the holy people should end in about 2027. But you remember that Daniel didn't say four times. He said a time, time and half a time or three and a half times will this lawless one have to scatter the people. Well, if we start at the year 2027 and back up three and a half times, we end up in the year 312, 312 AD. From 312 AD plus three and a half times, you end up in the year 2027. But watch what happens when we come back and we look at this other half a time. When you look at 67 AD or the year after the 69 weeks had transpired and you look at another half a time, it takes you to 312 AD. So from the last time that the daily sacrifice was taken away in 67 AD, plus a half a time it brings you to 312 AD. So you say, well, what's the significance of 312 AD? That's actually the year that Constantine made himself the head of the Christian church. Before 312, Constantine being emperor of the Roman Empire was destroying the disciples of the Messiah. He was actually part of the group that killed all of the disciples and the followers of Christ and had actually been raping and pillaging their communities up until 312. But in the year 312, Constantine decided that he was the head of the Christian church. Now, this was the same Constantine who went on to sit over the Council of Nicaea, where they actually changed the laws of the Bible. They changed the Ten Commandments. They actually changed the times of the scripture, even killing those who were trying to keep up with the sacred calendar and enforce the pagan calendar, which is kind of all centered around his date of Easter. So Constantine changed the times and he changed the laws, just like Daniel was talking about starting in 312 AD. Well, you'll notice that Daniel said that he had a time, time and a half a time in order to complete this scattering of the father's people. Well, when you start at 312 and you add three and a half times, you end in the year 2027. And to me, this makes the year 417, the year that they dedicated the temple, the important year, not necessarily the date of the decree by King Artaxerxes or any of the other kings that matter. I believe it was actually the actions, the rededication of the temple and the daily sacrifice being reinstituted that actually started these timelines in motion, not the 457 BC date, which William Miller picked. It actually should have been 417. But let's look and see what happens when you add the 2300 days of Daniel to the year 417 instead of the year 457. Now, when you look at 457 BC and you add 2300 years, you end up in 1844. And when you look at Daniel chapter eight, it was after these 2300 days that the temple is supposed to be cleansed. And when you look at other translations, instead of it saying the sanctuary would be cleansed, they say that the sanctuary will be reconsecrated or restored. 
And that was what William Miller was thinking about when he was talking about the second coming of the Messiah happening in 1844. Understanding the relationship between the temple and the Messiah and looking at these dates and these 2300 years, William Miller concluded that 1844 would be the second coming of the Messiah. But when you use the date 417, which was the date that the second temple was dedicated and add 2300 years, you end up in the year 1884 instead of the year 1844. That actually should have been the year that William Miller and his million strong followers around the country should have been paying attention to for the second coming of the Messiah was actually 1884 instead of 1844. Now, if they had have actually looked for that date, let me show you what they would have found. Now, before I take you over there, let's go by Revelation chapter 19 and let's talk about the second coming of the Messiah like you read there in verse 13. Now, you see in verse 11 that is talking about the heavens being opened and he called faithful and true returning on this white horse. And you see in verse 12 that it says nobody knew what his name was. And then in verse 13, it says that his name is called the word of God. Now, this too is all talking about the return of the Messiah. But my point here is that his return, he will be called the word of God. And this shouldn't be too surprising when you consider John chapter one and verse one, which says that the Messiah is the word and he was the word and he was the word in the beginning with the Messiah. Well, it shouldn't be too surprising that when he returns, that he will return as the word of God. Well, he actually did return as the third testament of the Bible. And what year did the Third Testament of the Bible came out? You guessed it, 1884. This is what William Miller was talking about. He was off by 40 years only because he chose to use the date of Artaxerxes instead of the date of the temple. But if he had have been in the correct year of 417 instead of 457, he would have been looking forward to this third testament of the bible this is actually the second coming of the messiah the messiah returned as the word of god in 1844 and that's what the scripture has been telling us all along through the book of daniel and his prophecies it's just that we allow william miller and others to set the wrong date based on their assumptions and this is why in today's climate we have to reject the information from those early religious leaders because they have flaws and they have errors and if we don't learn to do so we'll be like the seven day of venice and the mormons and the other religions of the day where we only hire and listen to preachers who will support the mistakes that was made by william miller in other words, if you go into a seven day Adventist church today and try to understand the mistakes of William Miller, they're going to label you as a heretic and they're going to send you out the door. So when it boils down to it, these people have chosen their religion over the truth. They're not so interested in how William Miller got things wrong or even what the correct year was as they are interested in keeping their religion intact. That's what the scripture is talking about when it says to come out of her, else you will receive her plagues. So if you continue in these religions that are based on these mistaken doctrines and you promote those errors, then you will receive the plagues as the result of those errors. Like the Bible says, those who lead people into captivity will go into captivity. So if there are people who are being confused and led astray by the errors of William Miller still being promoted by the religions that sprung off of his doctrine, 
Well, those same religious leaders that are upholding that doctrine through their religion will be the same people who will follow that doctrine and miss all of these other significant events like the Third Testament of the Bible. It was the Third Testament of the Bible that Daniel was talking about in his 2300 day prophecy. Now, you can find a link to this book in the description of this video, both an audio version that you can listen to on YouTube and or a PDF version that you could download to your device and or print out. There's even a link to a hardcover copy that you could purchase in the description from a website called GetThirdTestament.com. Whatever method you choose in which to consume this book, the Third Testament of the Bible is the third part of the trilogy. It is the scripture for the new covenant that we hear about in Jeremiah chapter 31. And it is what Daniel was talking about when he says that the temple will be reconsecrated or restored. It is the doctrine of the Third Testament of the Bible that's aiding in the restoration or the rebuilding of the Third Temple.